Today is Thursday, April the 14th, 2016, and the location of the interview is in the home of Bill or William Jones in Hermiston, Oregon. Uh, I am interviewing William Jones, who is a veteran of World War II. Uh, Bill left the service as a PFC, Private First Class, and he served from 1943 to 1945 in the United States Army Air Force. Bill was born November 14, 1923. Dixie Ferguson and Vic Phillips, the videographer, are conducting the interview today. And we represent the Blue Mountain chapter of the American Red Cross. So, uh, once again, Bill, what war and branch of service did you serve? Never well, did. <laughs> the war was World War II. Uh -huh. 717 Squadron, 49th Group. Uh -huh. In World War II, yes. Yeah. As the US United States Army Air Force, right. Okay. And were you drafted or did you enlist? I drafted. Drafted. Were you, where were you when you were drafted, Bill? Right here. In working, Hermiston. Working, working at Ordnance. Were you born here in Hermiston? No. Where were you born? Colorado. Uh, what part of Colorado? All right, see you in the county. Okay. <laughs> and how did you get to Hermiston? How'd your family get here? What? <laughs> We just moved here. Was it because of work? Well, I don't know. Yeah, so <laughs> you just got here. When you did, you move here when you were really young. Right now. Uh, did you move to Hermiston when you were a young boy? Yes. You were a young boy. Okay. So, did you get to finish high school? I was a senior in high school here. Okay. Did you get to graduate? Yes. That's good. So, did Uncle Sam find you right after high school? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. How, how old were you when you were drafted? Uh, I was born in 23 and I was drafted in 43. I was 19. 19 years old. You Were you watching the news? Did you kind of know that it was the letter was going to be in the mail for you? Did you expect it? No, not it? in prediction. It's yeah. just, just routine. Yeah. <laughs> so the letter showed up one day. So did you feel prepared to go, or did it come as a real surprise to you to get the draft letter? Oh, yeah. I was ready to go. You're ready, yeah. Were a lot of your buddies already going in the service from high school? No, quite a few of them. Yeah. Exactly. You were right at that age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Where did you go for your induction? Did you go to Portland or? Spokane. Spokane. Everybody went to Spokane. And then <clears throat> where did they assign you for basic training? Salt Lake. Salt Lake, uh huh. And uh, did you have an idea what you wanted to do when you? were drafted in the service if you had a choice? Well, yeah, I thought I'd just stay in ordinance. I'd work in ordinance. Ordinance, uh-huh. When you say work in ordinance, uh, what were you doing? What is that? What is that about? Handling ammunition. Doing handling ammunition? Sure, right out here in ordinance. Yeah, right over here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How long was that in Hermiston, that ordinance? Was that there for a long time, that depot? Well, was well, I worked until I got out of the, you know, the, out of high school. High school. Went there. Uh huh. And I worked and worked there until I got service in. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> was that there since World War One? The Ordnance Depot. Out here. Uh huh. No. Was yeah. it just for World War Two? This was built for World War Two. I see. Okay. Uh, this is kind of a silly question, but what? What kind of ammunition was out there? All ammunition. <laughs> Good answer. Bullets and bombs, everything was out there. Mm. Sounds to me like that would have been a dangerous job. I don't know, it just worked. You just did it, yeah. <laughs>
around. Yep, no, no big deal. <laughs> anyway, okay, so you went to Salt Lake City for your, did you call it boot camp or basic? Uh, in Salt Lake, they uh -huh. evaluated you. Okay, for what area you were going to go into? Is that what you mean? No. What I mean is they evaluated you. Yeah. Then they assigned you. Okay. And then where did they assign you when you were in Salt Lake? All right. They went to Miami Beach. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this no. didn't mean anything to them. <laughs> Miami Beach went to uh -huh. Ordnance School up in, I remember Illinois, in, yeah, Illinois. I'm sorry, Illinois? Illinois school in Illinois. Illinois, uh-huh. Do you remember, like, was it two months, five months? Do you remember how long you went through training? Well, in Miami Beach, I was there for almost two weeks. <laughs> yeah, mm hmm And then, that's quite a difference between Miami and Illinois. Well, time. It's what? Time. Time, yeah. Uh, what? Was it really hot, then really cold when you got to Illinois, the weather? No, just chilly. Chilly. <laughs> okay. They had uh -huh. taken over all of the uh, tourist area. In Miami? In Miami. Uh-huh. You know, the interviews I have done, there must have been training going all over this country. Mm -hmm. I had no idea there was a base in Miami Beach, but <laughs> it was, like I say, it was a busy time of training, going to war. Well, anyway, so were you liking training so far when you went in? Were you liking it? Well, at the time, just, yes, do this, do that, do this. Yeah. And training. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how many siblings do you have, did you have at the time? How many brothers and sisters? Uh, how many did I have? Eight. Eight, uh-huh. About eight. <laughs> Were you the only one that was uh, in the service at the time? At the time, yes. Yes, you were. Okay. Uh, I can imagine the family was a bit concerned here. <laughs> Head down. Worn after you went in. What, the, another one? Were two more brothers. Two more. That went after you. Oh, my gosh. Were you the oldest in the family, Bill? Yes. Okay. Well, anyway, we're in Illinois now, and uh, were you there for quite a while for ordinance school? Not very long. Uh huh. I think about a couple of months. Yeah. Were you kind of homesick? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Personal question. <laughs> well, <laughs> you were meeting people from all over the country, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you probably knew that you were on your way, what, either to Europe or the Pacific? Well, at that time, probably Europe. Europe. I didn't, didn't know at that time. Yeah. Well, when did you find out what your assignment was going to be? Right there in Illinois, did they assign you to Europe? No. Uh-huh. From there, I went to the coast of California. Coast of California? Uh -huh. More training. More training. No, for assigning. Oh, assignment. Oh, you were zigzagging all over the country. <laughs> then they sent me to, uh, well, I got the name of it. Mm -hmm. they, they crossed the river into Arizona and Southern California, okay. which they did that one. Ooh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Yuma. Uh, mm -hmm. oh. oh, boy. Let's see. Well, uh, Fort Irwin. Uh, Fort Roberts, but it was on the border of uh, California and Arizona? No, on the Arizona side. Not Yuma? No. Okay, Tucson? <laughs> no, uh, we were right next to the river on the okay. east side. Okay, Colorado River? Over in that area? Colorado yeah. River, too. Uh-huh, okay. Then we went from there to uh, Alamogordo. Okay, Alamogordo, New Mexico. Boy, you were getting a lot of training. <laughs> then you went to uh, Nebraska. Nebraska? Uh-huh. How long altogether was your training? About a year? Well, we left 
in December. You went to Europe in December? Not Europe. Oh. Went to South, went to Africa. Oh, yeah? North Africa? North Africa. Uh, can you hear him okay, Bill? I mean, okay. Uh, North Africa. Then uh, in the, not the first week of February, he went to uh, let's see, he was Sicily. on a ship. Sicily? He, Sicily? Yeah, Italy. Sicily. Sicily or Italy? Oh, it's a big capital. Uh, it would have been uh, see, the capital, you're saying? No, Rome. Oh, Rome. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I was there for about a week and then they set us down to the, that is to the Mediterranean. Uh -huh. Do you remember why you went to North Africa first? Was it just to get an assignment? They, when they got there, that was the question which production is going to send us. I see. Was that the time that General Patton was there at that time? That was a little before that. Before Patton. Did you eventually serve under Patton? No. You did not? Mm-hmm. No, I stayed in the Air Force. Oh, for, okay. Patton he was, was not there Air Force. Yeah, you're right. You are right. He was Army. That's right. Okay, so you're in Rome for, I mean, here you are from Hermiston, Oregon, and now you have seen half of the world. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Thanks to Uncle Sam. <laughs> okay, so you're now in Rome. Did you have any impressions? Can you remember? I mean, seeing these foreign countries, was it fascinating to you, or did you have enough time to see it no, all? No, I didn't have much time to yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. Stay busy. Yeah, you bet. Uh, do you remember that from Rome, where did you go? Toronto. So, Toronto Air Toronto. Base. To you know, I'm yeah, not that's remember about what five that's or six like. Uh -huh. About five or six miles east of Toronto. Tora Am I saying it right? Toronto. 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 Yes. Okay. Is that close to Rome? No. No. No, 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 no. Uh, north? Uh, uh huh. That is south. South. That is south against the Mediterranean. Okay. I've never heard of that place. I mean, I've, there's a lot of places I haven't heard of, but yeah. What was that? A little town on the coast? Is that what it was? Or a base? Toronto? Well, it's a medium sized town. Uh huh. Uh, okay, and that's where you stayed for a while, was right there? That's where we stayed. Okay. That's where the air base was. And then, what was your assignment there? Ordnance. But what, what, what were you doing? Loading airplanes? Mostly handling bombs. What kind of bombs? All of them. All kinds of bombs. Uh, do you remember the kind of aircraft that you were loading B onto? B-24. B-24s, yeah. Did you ever get to ride in any of them? Oh, yeah. Then they rode back to Rome. In Rome? So it was up to Rome and back a couple of times. Yeah. Can you describe, do you remember what it was like riding in one of those big uh, bomb Bomber planes. Well, just noisy. <laughs> and no kid, and cold, I'll bet. Well. Yeah. And I, I've seen them out at our airport when they come in. Very small in there. And you you can't be a big person flying in that those the crew members. I remember touring them and they're very narrow. And uh so did you remember when the pilots, the crew members would come off of their missions? Did they ever share stories? Did you hear any stories about what was going on? I know. You knew. Were they going into Germany? All over. All over. Uh -huh. North. All over. Uh-huh. That would have been France. All right, up there you can get an idea. Uh-huh. It was the... Uh, Major areas, 
probably right. France, Germany, mostly Germany would be my mm. guess. Germany, parts of Italy too. You think? Italy too? I uh, I don't know. I think they were out of Italy at that time. Yeah. Uh huh. But uh, but did you? Were there any losses of any of the planes that you were? I want to introduce the family members in the room for the video, and I'll start with Doris. Doris Reed, I mean, middle sister. Doris Reed, R middle R sister. R-E-I-D? Right. Okay. Emily Mellick, and I'm his niece. M-I-L-L-I-C-K. M-E-L-L-I-C-K. Is, is the niece. Yeah. Okay. I'm Edna Collier. I'm 10 years younger than he is. <laughs> Ed, okay, Edna Collier, C O L L I E R. Y E R. Y E R. Younger niece? Niece? Sister. Sister, sister. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. I'm Emily's mother. I think I'm. Uh, I'm Emily's mother. Emily's mother. <laughs> Emily's mother. Okay, very well. Sorry I did not introduce you in the beginning. Um, Bill, if. If you don't mind, uh, could you repeat what you shared with me for the video? You said 30% of the crew the, people? Uh -huh. Fly boys. Fly boys uh -huh, mm -hmm. were lost. Yes. Yes. And you said about 300? About 300? I think more than 300. Yeah. And that would have been in about, what, a year's time? Is that correct? Well, that started in... Well, they started flying in January and went through yeah. all the 44 and those in 45 days mm -hmm. reduced them out quite a bit. Yeah. If this isn't too painful to ask you, <clears throat> were many of them able to be picked up, retrieved, and brought back, or? I have no idea. We don't know. Yeah. And you did say some of them became POWs? About half of them. Half of them did. Did you ever learn if they were released or not? Ever? As far as I know, they were. They were eventually. And that's the well, good news. They were news. told they were. Yeah. And that's the good news. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. And I just want to read a little bit from your discharge, <laughs> honorable discharge. Here. Now, they didn't tell us where those planes were going. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was pretty secretive. Yes, Very confidential. You just did your job. Yeah. And Bill, I'm reading on here, uh, Rhineland, Po Valley, North Apennines, uh, Rome, Arno, Northern France, uh, Naples, Southern France, uh, Normandy, Balkans. So those were all the different areas that they were yes, flying they into. Ran. They flew up and helped on that everything. Every day. About how many missions a day would you say they would go out on? Well, they're just 300 plus, I don't know, mm -hmm. four or five. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, could you describe your living conditions there? Were they barracks? Were they what? Were they barracks? I have no idea. I mean, for you, how did you live in your in your well, base? Uh -huh. First, I slept in a bombed-out building, okay. and they brought in some tents. Uh -huh. And because they had several Italians in the group, they talked the Italian labor crew to build us a little cabin. Uh -huh. uh, how many could? sleep and live in one of the cabins. Oh, that was that was just for four of us. Four. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, uh, of course, some of them stayed in the tents all the time. Tents all the time. Can you describe if there was such a thing as a typical day? Is Can you describe it? What time you would get up and... Well, for me, uh -huh. we would get up around 9 or 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Waiting for the order to see the, whatever the order was. That'd be three, four, five, or six o'clock when the order came in. Mm -hmm. Then they would work until it got the plane, planes loaded. Mm -hmm. How long would it take to, to 
to load a plane. Depends upon what kind of bones. Yeah. Uh, was it a typical, like an hour? Oh, no, I used to, to, we used to work five or six hours usually, maybe well, seven or eight. Oh, I meant each plane, loading each plane, about an hour? Well, it depends upon what it was, it'd be uh -huh. 500 pound bombs, so wow. maybe half an hour. Yeah. How if many? Well, if they're 100 pound bombs, maybe two or three hours. 500 pound bomb. How many men would it take to put that onto the plane? They may had a hoist, oh, really like that. They had a, uh -huh. the little bombs, 100 pound bombs, they loaded them by hand. By hand, yeah. A 500 pound bombs, they hoisted them. Wow, big bomb. I mean, the irony is, do you think some of those came from Hermiston? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. They didn't put names on <laughs> Right. But it could have. Could have, but I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Were you, if there's such a word as uh, rewarding, satisfying, was the word knowing you were contributing to the victory of the war, was it rewarding to you to do that? Or no. did you, you just felt like it was a job? Just none. <laughs> right. Yeah, but it was part of the victory. It was the big team mm -hmm. getting the war won. You were part of the victory team. Mm -hmm. And uh, about how many would you say, how many uh, uh, planes were at that base? Well, they started out, they signed 10 planes, and then they signed when they got more planes, they signed up 12. 12, uh-huh. Was that typical to have 10 or 12 planes in a base? Oh, well, that's for each squadron. Oh, okay. Well, then for the whole base, about how many planes would well, be there? Well, they that, there's four squadrons. Four, okay, quite a few planes. Was it just noisy all day long, just coming oh, in and out? Oh, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> So your typical day would be loading of the bombs, and you did that all day long for about six hours? No, we'd start yeah. when the order came in, yeah. in the afternoon, right. when the planes come back. Okay. Would they come back and go back out again? And one day, usually yeah. well, only, usually only one. One day, uh-huh, yeah. And then, would the same crew go right back out the same day, or the next day? I have no idea. Yeah. They didn't tell us. Yeah. You didn't see all that going nope. on. You just put them on the planes. Yeah. But I do know that those B-24s, 25s, and the 17s were mighty, mighty workhorses for the war. I know <laughs> that. They were very well mm -hmm. built. Uh, did some of them come back in, crippled coming back in, and was that a place where they could be repaired? No, if any plane was crippled, it stopped at Fogia. Fogia. And that was like a repair no, maintenance? headquarters. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. How long were you at your base? Well, I got there in January. Uh -huh. And they said, let's see, they split us off. That is, I split off the ordinance because uh -huh. it stopped long range bombing. Uh -huh. Did you do other things while you were there other than loading the planes? Or was that your oh, job? That's pretty much it. That was it. How about the food? Were you pretty well fed there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no problem there. <laughs> yeah. Did, was there any time that you could ever leave the base, or did you have to stay on base? Oh, on off duty, you could leave the base and go to mm -hmm. Toronto if you wanted to. Uh huh. Is there any way you could, would you call it like a little town or a village? Well, the uh, Toronto, we stayed out of the little town of Toronto. Uh -huh. And where the base is at, there's some of the ancient buildings. Oh, yeah. Nearby. History. Yeah, probably lots of history there. 
Were you right on the Mediterranean coast? Is that where you were? Oh, uh, we were about a mile from the Mediterranean coast. Were you able to go over there at any time to the beaches? Oh, as you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I'm guessing that they had quite a few restrictions on your whereabouts is what I'm guessing, is that right? Well, the restrictions during the day. Uh-huh. If you weren't on duty, you could mm -hmm. go off base if sure. you wanted to. Uh, Bill, were there any time that you had any kind of what they would call furlough or leave while you were over there? Or you were on the base working them all the time you were there? Yeah, I was. I was working all the time. Mm -hmm. So you never really got to see the country at all? They gave me about a week mm -hmm. after, after Rome, t Rome. Two, two times. Uh -huh. And they gave me about a week on the, down on the tip of the hill. Oh, nice. Um, was Rome damaged at that time or was it held intact? I don't know how much it was damaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I do understand that they did drop a few bombs on the, on Rome. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have any contact with the Italians at all, like the villagers or the M people? Myself, no. No. Uh huh. Do you remember if the Americans were pretty well received in Italy? Were they happy to have you there? Well, I was in Italy. They gave us a guide if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. Because I'm thinking they were happy that you were coming in to save them mm -hmm. from Hitler and Mussolini. That's, well, I'm guessing that. We don't know. Huh? I don't know what yeah. I would have done. <laughs> we'll guess that. Well, okay, so uh, were you assigned any place else in Europe then? Or you, no. That was your full tour there. Did you get to write home very often? Uh, letters to home? Oh yeah, you could write letters all the time. You could, uh-huh. Okay, I'm sure that, and like we were saying earlier, were there certain things you couldn't say a lot in your yes, letter? Yes, there were. Restrictions? And what you, you wrote, yeah. You couldn't mention where you were, you yeah. couldn't take pictures. Yeah, 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 so. But I know from the past that the sweetest thing in the whole day is a letter from home. A real morale booster. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, it was a dirigible base. Say it again. A dirigible. Dir oh, it was? Dirigible base? They had two dirigible hangers. Oh. So, uh -huh. well, any picture would show anybody where we were. Uh -huh. Where we were. Yeah, interesting. Um, do, could you explain for the video what those dirigibles were doing? That's what we're doing. What, what were the? Could you explain what the dirigibles were doing? They weren't there when we got there. Okay. Probably been shot down. Oh, could you explain what their mission was? what they were supposed to do? Well, uh, dirigible, that would uh -huh. have been observation. Observation. Or just look. Uh-huh. Kind of an intelligence thing? I would imagine they uh -huh. would. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, <clears throat> while you were serving, did you get to hear a lot of the news going on, what was going on in the war? Not too much. They didn't hear, you know. You didn't have TV and internet those days. <laughs> Um, so when did you leave Italy, Bill? What month did you leave? Oh, uh, did I leave? Uh-huh. Uh, I was over one, one year. You were there the full year? Five months and twenty some odd days. <laughs> so, which month would it have been? <laughs> you, you were literally counting the days. <laughs> right. Uh, <clears throat> so when you're time of service came to an end. Uh, do you remember getting your orders to come back home? They were shipment. We were ordnance uh -huh. on long range missiles, long range uh 
Uh -huh. So the ships okay. had us off early. Okay. They had to went to short range. Oh, I see. Uh, when you say long range and short range, could you what, describe what that means? Well, they had stopped using the long range B-24s okay. for bombing. Okay, so the B-24s were considered the long range bombers. Oh, yes. Okay. And the short range would be what kind of? Be the medium. Medium type. Uh huh. Uh, do you know how far they could go? I have no idea. That's yeah, okay. I'm just trying to get this profile of what the war looked like. Well, yeah. on a long range, they would put on two tons. Two just tons? Wow. Short range, they put on two and a half or three tons. Wow. You know, I marvel that they could, uh, how many 500, po 500 pound bombs could one plane handle? How many? Well, it depends on whether we put on two ton, two and a half ton, or three ton. Okay, let's see. So uh, that would be four. Four per ton. Four five. Oof. You can't believe that those planes could lift off the ground mm -hmm. with all that ammun uh, all that munition on it. It's amazing. Did they have any kind of guns on board the plane also? Yes. They did. What they those? had uh -huh. to top. Top gunner, bottom gunner, front gunner, back gunner, and two mid, Man. two mid gunners. My gosh, the plane was a flying bomb. <laughs> wow, wow. Did they have crew members down below with the 50 calibers on the plane? Yeah. Sure, I had one yeah. down the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, approximately, how long would a mission take. Depends on how far they went. Yeah, well let's just say Germany. Would that be all day? They might be gone five or six hours, yeah. might be gone three or four hours. Yeah, yeah, wow. They must have been absolutely exhausted by on the time. On a super long range they would yeah. fly up to Russia. Russia? And, uh, say, to Russia and get refueled by England. Wow. Drop the bombs, refuel, and come back. Wow. I would think that they would have been exhausted by the time they got mm. back. You know, the emotional, the physical, and everything going mm. on. Yeah, real heroes. But you were part of that team, helping them. They couldn't mm -hmm. have done it without you. So, well, you got orders at the end of your time there. In, oh, by the way, how did you get over? To North Africa. I went over on a freighter, 10 ton freighter, 10,000 ton freighter. Where did you go out of New York? No, Camp Patrick Henry, Newport News. Newport News, Virginia. How long did it take you to get over there? Well, officially it took about three and a half weeks. <laughs> did you get seasick? When you went through the Strait of Gibraltar. They parked us in the desert out there in North Africa. Yeah. Wow. For about a week, a week and a half. Yeah. Wow. When you got to North Africa, did you still stay on the ship? Or did they, you got off? Well, they, they, they ran and it's, uh, I don't know where all the freighters went. Yeah. But they let, you got off the freighter. You got off of Tintin. 10,000 ton freighter. And then how did you get to Italy? Well, they gave us on the, uh, I was, uh, the larger ship. Uh huh. Was it like an LST type? Yeah, I think it was a tourist ship. Oh yeah, Liberty ship? Liberty ship? And I don't know wh which company it came from. Yeah. yeah, right, right. Wow, what an experience. How can you even guess how many troops were on that freighter going to North Africa? Thousands? No, they just had about one squadron on that. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. On that freighter. On that particular one. Wow, a young man from Hermiston, Oregon, <laughs> seeing the world. Wow. Did Bill, do you remember, did you have any thoughts? on that ship 
that freighter going over to the war. Do you remember yeah. that? Well, of course, you realize it was a large group. Sure, yeah. And they swung south mm -hmm. in hopes they wouldn't run into a submarine. Right, right. Because they were in that area. <laughs> yeah, but you never got seasick. I have no idea. <laughs> they didn't tell us. <laughs> but there were no incidents getting to uh, Africa then. No. Yeah, well, that was a good thing. Too. Not that I know of. Right, well, you, you would have known. <laughs> So, so you, so you got to Italy. Everything was by ship then, getting to Europe. And you what now? Everything was by ship getting to Europe. So when you yeah. were to come home, how did you get home? Uh, the, uh, all right, what was the largest <laughs> tourist ship uh, did they have in the 30s? In the 30s, uh-huh. And they gave it a new name and they gave it the, uh, the USS West Point. Fine, but huh? that was not the uh -huh. tourist name. Uh -huh. There were about fourteen thousand on us when they came back. How many? Fourteen. Fourteen thousand. On one ship? Yeah. Woo! Was this in 1945 then? Yes. Bill, do you remember where you were when the war was declared over? Yes. Where were you? I was on a troop train leading through the falls. Through the falls? Through the falls. Well, which falls? Through the falls. Sioux Falls? Sure. Oh, Sioux Falls? Illinois. Oh, so <laughs> you were coming home when they announced the No, the I was going to Delhart, Texas oh. on the way to Japan. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you were on the train when you heard the news. Do you remember how everybody reacted hearing that news? Well, all of the train whistles blew. I'm sorry, the train whistle blew? All of the train whistles. <laughs> what a, what a day, huh? So you thought you were going to go to Japan and finish the war over there. No, yeah, on the way. Goodness, and this would have been what 1945. Yes, and Truman, President Truman, uh, ended yeah. that war when the official uh -huh. information came in. You uh -huh. see, the war ended, I don't know how many hours before when the official orders came in. You see, yeah, wow, and if the official order didn't come in, you didn't get nothing, yeah. So, yeah, so did you actually go on to Texas, even though the European War was over? I went down to Texas, of okay. course. Uh -huh. And the, next morning the captain said, we're going to leave in four days. To Japan? Yeah. <laughs> two days later he said we delayed that two days. My goodness. And a couple of days later he said they going to be ten days. Huh. Then he told us it was canceled. Goodness, what a story. And, th and then what? Everyone said, I'd like you to stay. Uh -huh. I said, well, I'd like to get out. Okay. And they gave you the choice of staying in or, or leaving oh, yeah. the service. And you said, there's not even a decision. <laughs> You're going home. <laughs> so were you, did you end your service in Texas and then came back to Hermiston? Oh no, not direct. Well, what what happened in between? All right, you had to go to a some place to get the discharge. Okay. All right, I mentioned Colorado because the friend there, uh -huh. oh, they sent me that little base south of Denver. Okay. I don't remember what name of the base was. It just bit. Close to Denver. South of Denver. Yeah, not Fort Carson. Yeah, uh, Larry. Uh, uh, yeah, they may not even be there today, I don't know, yeah. So then, you went there, uh-huh. And they gave you the paperwork uh -huh. and discharge. How did you feel, was it just kind of unreal to you that it was all over and you didn't have to go to Japan and you got to come uh -huh. home? I was glad it was over. Of course. And then, I always like to hear about the homecoming. Now, did your family know that well, you were in Texas? There, I visited the 
all family members. In Colorado? In Colorado. Wow, well, how great. How great. Before I came. That's great. I bet everybody was Oregon. so happy. You're safe home. Uh, what an ending. And now, did your family back here know where you were in Colorado? Did they know you were in Colorado? Oh, yes. They knew it. Uh huh. Oh, sure. They knew where the family <laughs> members were. Okay, so now how did you get back to Hermiston? On the train. Oh, everything was trained. Pretty much. Yep. Did it come from Colorado to uh, Portland and back, or no. where'd they leave you off? This. Do uh, you, you remember where the train routes were? Train route? Hinkle? Did you say? Hinkle? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they, how convenient. They dropped you off in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where the train route went. <laughs> All right. I didn't think the military was that accommodating. <laughs> well, I was already out of service. You think, yeah, that that's really quite a story. So, did your family know when you were arriving in Hinkle, or how did it end up? No, uh, they arrived. I got off a train here in Hermiston. In Hermiston, in your uniform. Well, I had sent a letter when I got out of the hospital. You were in the hospital? Yes. Ah. All right, now hit ah. with your warfare. Okay, I missed that. I'm sorry. Now, I know you've heard of, it, ah. heard of some things. Ah. And when we got to Newport News, yeah. we started coming down with it. Getting, what did you get? It's Newport News. Uh -huh. And you came down with that. Well, a terrific fever. They never did identify it. I never have heard that story. And oh. for me, my fever went to 103. Oh my gosh. And it stayed there for about a week or 10 days. And you stayed in the hospital in yes. Newport? Wow. Then, fever broke and that was it. Were there a group of you, kind of like a meningitis or something, a group of you that had it? I don't know. They never did identify it. Oh they called the virus X. I've never heard of that. Huh. And do you have any idea, did you contract it from Europe or on the ship or well, you don't know? Well, we think we contracted it in Europe. Oh, I'll be darned. Huh. We Not think. on purpose. On purpose, we think. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, on base camp, do you think? We don't know. We think uh -huh. that the spy had put powders, put powder in on the ventilator and the uh, powder in the what? Uh, in the on the where we ate ate. Uh -huh. well, I'll be darned. A lot of you. Yes. Were you sick on the ship? No, I was, I was already off the ship and came uh -huh. down with it. Okay. Uh huh. In Newport News. I was in Newport News. Bill, was it kind of a life threatening fever? Well, I'll tell you now. Uh -huh. If you were in a concentration camp, dark down, uh -huh. how many days would you live with 103 fever? Yeah. One fellow had problems, health problems, he went to 107. Wow. He didn't die, but he... Feel like you want to die mm -hmm. at that. Wow. And if you will read back, the, they will, all you will find that they ran several ideas of what they might scatter around the world. My goodness, I've not heard that story. Wow. So I assume that in the concentration camp, uh -huh. they died. Mm -hmm. Wow. On purpose with this. Yes. Yes. My goodness. Now we got the rumor that the entire base came down with it. Uh -huh. The wow. advance officer came down with it. Uh -huh. He, of course, he flew over. Uh -huh. And he came down with it. Did anybody die to your knowledge? Not to my knowledge. Yeah. What a story. 
So did you feel well enough to travel on the train down to te uh, Colorado and Texas then? Oh, I only got, mm -hmm. got rid of the fever for yeah. a couple of days. So. Ready to go. Boy, that's strange. Uh, <clears throat> in today's world, I don't think it would have taken them very long to do the technology to figure out, trace it back, but we didn't have that back then. Yeah. I don't know, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, right. strange things. But, uh, well, you got off the train in your uniform over here in Hermiston then? I walked. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No graffiti, no parades. You walked home. Now midnight. Bill, did you just not walk through the front door? Oh, I knocked on the door. <laughs> Everybody was coming home. Oh, uh, do you remember? Do you remember this? No. No. Oh, uh, who was home when you walked in? Home about four miles east. Okay, you knocked on the door. Who, <laughs> who answered the door, Bill? <laughs> Did your mom and dad answer the door? Oh, yeah. Oh, they must have been so... They knew you were in the States, but they didn't know when you were coming home. That's true. I said I am. At that time, why are you... Did you want to surprise them? I said I, said, I noticed it. I'm <laughs> at the hospital and be home in a few days. <laughs> that is classic. <laughs> what a story. So... Your mom and dad must uh, must have just been just overjoyed. Did your mom cook your favorite meal the next morning? Did you sleep at all that night? Yes, I slept. I was tired. <laughs> I bet you were. I bet you slept more than a few days. <laughs> You'd been through a lot. But did your mom cook your favorite meals for you? I don't remember what I had to back then. <laughs> Just glad to be home. Did you have back in your old bedroom? Where you did you come back to your same house? Same house. Same house. Wow, what a story. Okay, you're home from the war, and then what did you do? Good. Well, <laughs> pretty soon. Well, in the early spring, I went uh, over on Snake River. Snake River? Uh-huh. And that fall, I went to LaGrand School. LaGrand? School in LaGrand? Uh-huh. What, what, what did you study? Oh, just general. Uh-huh. And then after school, you got a job? Uh, I went down that over on Snake River again. Snake River? What was it, Snake River? Well, my uncle was prospecting over there. Ah, miner. Did you strike some gold? No. <laughs> now we're getting personal. All you had was day ride. Say again. Bay ride. Bay ride. All right. I don't know what that is. There's is it a, a mineral? Bay, a white bay ride was used for paint. Oh, okay. Uh, they usually call it barium. Barium. Okay, gotcha. Is that what and you did? Uh huh. Well, on the whole, about three or four years later, when I was ready to go to work and produce, they came in titanium paint mm -hmm. out of business before we got started. Oh, oh, oh dear. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> okay, then, well, you learned, you certainly learned a trade. It was probably pretty interesting. Yeah. Was it out on the river, on the Snake Rivers, where you were oh, doing about it? About a mile from there. Yeah. It probably was kind of nice just to get out yeah. in the fresh air, freedom again, wasn't it? Kind of. <laughs> and then they started looking for gold. Uh huh. Did you ever find any? Not very much. <laughs> Not enough to talk about, huh? Yeah, okay. Then what, uh, Bill, after all of that, then? Not now. Uh, I meant, uh, what, what did you do next, then? Well, I went to part-time work there at the old mine for uh -huh. the care, caretaker. What kind? Caretaker. Caretaker? Uh-huh. Yeah. And then is... Then you stayed in this area then for the rest of your yeah, life? Yeah, I'd stay here. Uh-huh. 
worked who worked on uh, worked in the grapes quite a while. Wait, where? What, here. Here in Hermiston, huh? Yeah. And then, uh, uh, did you find a bride? No, I didn't. <laughs> no bride. <laughs> okay, so you stayed single. Yes. Well, I stayed single too. So <laughs> yeah, and uh, stayed close to home. And did you ever join any service organizations? Oh yes. What what VFW? VFW. Yeah. Are you still a member? I'm still a member, a lifetime member. Lifetime, all right. Were you pretty active? Oh, I was active for uh -huh. several years. And uh -huh. uh, Bill, did you stay in touch with any of your buddies from the service? Well, I, for a while, I mm -hmm. stay, stay in touch with an Italian pensioni. <laughs> and uh, say that one more time, Italian? Oh, uh, that's, that's Italian. Yeah. <laughs> a buddy. Yeah. I bet you, okay. And, uh, but no letter writing or anything after the war? You didn't? Oh, wrote for two, three, three, four years. Yeah, and, uh, just kind of lost, lost track. Yeah. But uh, have you traveled much since you've been back home or did you stay close to home? Oh, uh, I haven't traveled very much. Yeah, stay at home. Yeah, well, you already saw half the world. So. <laughs> Just go and come in and see it. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's <laughs> very true. <laughs> but, well, in looking back on your military service, is there something special that you will always remember or the difference that the military made in your life? Is there any highlight that you can remember? <laughs> Reflecting back, do you think about it often? Oh, wow! Yeah, sure. You yeah, know, you never th those kinds of experiences you never forget for sure. But yes, uh, and I will mention something to you. Uh huh. On headquarters, they had a do you want us to stop for a minute so you can? Get your thoughts together. We'll just wait a minute here, Bill. That's fine. It's it's all okay. He's he's have enjoyed the planes. Say so just a little bit clearer, Bill. I didn't. I still don't know how many. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, and uh, one day the captain said you won't have to send guard duty anymore. Mm -hmm. We got in a company of waivers. Company of. A uh, company of waivers. Waivers. New work. New. Just do anything. I want to be clear that I'm hearing you correctly. And they uh, were new, actually uh, uh -huh. undercover agents. In your group? Every place. Wow. And they found the wow. saboteur. Wow. And they had all over the base. All over. They had the request to the general. Mm -hmm. Some were very, very formal and some were direct. We want you to put us on the firing squad. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. You had to be part of that? Well, then the general sent uh, said a notice. I said, we have Individuals assigned, already assigned for that. Mm. Oh my goodness. So you didn't have to? No, no. Oh my goodness. And in England, mm. now that guy was a master sergeant. Mm. 
He's an inst uh, instructor. And in England, the colonel and the general staff was a German spy. Oh, and he saw a notice on the one day, it said that 800 planes went down. And the reason, the only reason they caught him was mm. they had brought in a new radar with a different frequency and put it on a plane for a test run. He wanted, Colonel wanted to take a ride too. Of course, what can you do? Mm. And of course, the British took track of everything. Mm. So eventually, they figured out who it was. A total traitor. Wow. And I just still don't know. All I know is one high-ranking officer was allowed to commit suicide. Mm. I know that. Other than that, I don't know. My goodness, what stories. But they shot down about 800 points in one day. Of course, the Germans caught cost them between three and four thousand fire planes too. Sure, yeah, but war is a terrible, evil, evil thing, I tell you. My goodness. I, I, these are new stories that I had <laughs> not heard. You know, this is very tough. And, you know, I... Yeah, they did all they could to and uh, they also know we had a spy in the base, we also know that. Mm -hmm. And they used uh, radio. And the intelligence went out and they put, they put directional antennas all over the place. Mm -hmm. And they changed the situation. In other words, when they find out where the planes were going, which direction, that the information right there. That, what frequency was that? Well, that's that the direction they were going. Mm -hmm. wow. Quick and easy. Yeah. Wow. Evil, evil, evil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Bill, did you ever have any suspicions or? Probably had no idea of what was going on, huh? Well, the uh, planes would, well, go down and say, well, maybe it's just, mm -hmm. just a strange cannon which you had all over the place. Sure. Then several planes, when they started in, you had long time timers on the grenades which you put in the front end of the plane. And then when they ran out, they started using regular grenades. Mm. So when they put the, pulled up the wheels, why? Try to take off. Unreal. So you were seeing crashes before they even took off then? No, oh, that, that was about 60 miles north of us. Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. We had mm. two, we had two or three plane crashes. And the officer that had the job, the British, U.S., back and forth, he didn't give him much information. A B-17 and the British, they dumbed everything down. Oh. They thought they dumbed everything down. And why was that? They dumbed it down. Yeah. Why did they do it? Why? Make it simple. So they would have long runways mm -hmm. and get ready to take off. You set the engine and go, 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 and say, no, so. Our mm -hmm. runway was short. Mm -hmm. Had to get up speed and jump off. Hmm. Yeah. You have an amazing recollection of things. <laughs> the details are amazing. And we lost one point over that. Eh? Mm -hmm. 
I got transferred from England. Mm. Wow. And, well, he just do it like they did in England. Mm -hmm. A V-24 won't glide. Mm -hmm. Glide, uh-huh, yeah. It must have engine power. You really got to know the planes very well, didn't you? No, very little bit. What's that? Very little. They very did, little? They, 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 yeah, it sounds they, like you they, knew they, quite they a bit about the planes. And and, yeah. yeah. And um, what I mentioned on that, they had one guy been transferred from England. And I remember a plane was, oh, well, needed repair. Well, probably the only reason I wasn't on it was probably because I was working nights. Hmm. Wasn't your time. Anyway, he tried to glide it like it was 17 and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Crashed. It did. Yeah. Any survivors? And I don't know how many were on it. Yeah. 12, 14. Goodness. Just. They probably the only reason I wasn't was I was working nights. Yeah. Wasn't your time, Bill. Here you are. What, 92 years old, did you have any clue that you would be 92? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I had one uncle uh -huh. on the family side, went to 93. There you go. We're expecting great things from you, Bill. <laughs> and I just had that on the family side. Uh-huh. He made it 94, 95. <laughs> wow. Well, all I can say is you are a part of the amazing generation. Yeah. You are just, <laughs> here, um. we, here we are, Bill, because of people like you enjoying this wonderful country. Well, I was the only one of many. I know, but you were part of that team. And you could have been on that plane I probably would have been. You could have been. been. been on the day. Yes, absolutely. But, well, are there any other things that you want to share uh, that uh, you may, that I didn't cover in uh, my questions while you were over there? Because this is really an important part of history. I mean, this is the stuff the history books are made of. No, yeah, I say we stayed busy. Yes, you did. And also, I know you have read about the hard winter they had. No, would you like All to tell? Right. Yeah. We were iced down for about six weeks. Wow. Would that have been like January, February? Yeah, sure, at the same time they had that super cold spell in Europe. Hmm. Did that just, wait a minute, was that during the, not the Battle of the Bulge, when the cold Christmas, when everything was just frozen in place? Might have been. Uh-huh. Well, did that really slow the war down a lot then because of that? Well, I don't know whether it did or not. Yeah. yeah. It was too cold to fight. Yeah. Could the plane, the planes couldn't. Bomb then. Well, we were iced down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. About six weeks. Six weeks worth. I didn't know that. Then it warmed up, of course, and the ice went off. Went off. You know what? Maybe it was God's way of giving everybody kind of a break, uh, <laughs> you know, from the tension and the anxiety of it all. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so you basically couldn't do anything, just stay mm -hmm. in your quarters the whole time? During, I don't know. Yeah, 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 kind of frozen in place. No, time goes by. Yeah, that's right. Uh, are there any other things, Bill, that mm. you can recollect to share? Because sometimes I walk away from these interviews <laughs> and I think, ah, why didn't I ask this? Vic, is there anything <laughs> that you have to, okay? Well, I do remember that they got rumors that the Germans are going to use gas. Mm -hmm. And one day they couldn't 
I had no sergeant in any place. Next day, about five o'clock in the morning, we found out why. What happened? Well, they grabbed the grabbed the trucks with the trailers and went down south about halfway down the hill and loaded up a bunch of gas bombs in the open. Okay, who who was making? And we came back. Uh huh. Well, of course the spies do it, they had gas. Wow. Was that a hint? The Germans not to use gas. Wow, yeah. It was. Yeah. So I want to be clear on this. So you went down to the, people went down, the military went down to the heel of Italy and found these gas bombs? Well, okay. When they, un, when they made the invasion, mm -hmm. And, and, and Italy, that's where they hit. They hit them. And they did have uh -huh. quite a few gas bombs with them. Man, that's really amazing. Evil. And at Toronto, uh -huh. they had one ship blow up, loaded with bombs. Uh -huh. And I don't know, I talked to one guy that was across the board and across the harbor. Mm -hmm. He said, I could see the bottom of the harbor. Meaning what? He saw the bottom, what does that mean? Well, the ship blew up. Oh. And whether, I still don't know, but I think that they put a push release Fuse on that bomb in the United States. Mm -hmm. Now that's just, that's just a thinking. Mm -hmm. And when they unloaded the bombs, push it. Wow. I do remember though when I went that afternoon. Went to get bombs. All the safety plugs have been taken out. Mm -hmm. So so they weren't there. Well, it sounds like, was there quite a bit of infiltration going on, spies? Oh, yes. It sounds like it. Oh. Yeah, it is. Well, after a while, could you feel like you trusted anybody on the base? Didn't it make you a little paranoid? Well, you just looked at everybody. Yeah, watched yourself, yeah. One Italian was, well, I don't know what he, he got in, got in problems. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he did. And he jumped the border and jumped and joined the French army. Mm -hmm. oh. Then when things didn't suit him, he jumped the border and joined the Spanish army. <laughs> A mercenary. Then when the war started, he jumped the border back to Italy. Oh and he was on our labor crew. A what? Weber crew. Uh, is that one more time. We had a Weber crew, Italians. Oh, wh I'm not getting that way. Just help. Oh, help. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And one day, a guy zipped through on the highway mm -hmm. on a German motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And just off the base was a bunch of Italians that were staying there. And he went over and he got that guy and ordered him on the motorcycle. Took him about a quarter of a mile, ordered him off and shot him. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Bill, did you say there were firing squads uh, uh, for the, uh, against the enemy? <laughs> I think there was. There was, yeah. I don't have any idea. Yeah. Wow. Wow. These are... Stories, but, but that guy could speak Italian and get by in English, get by in French, get by in Spanish. Pretty smart. Somebody was after him. <laughs> Gee. Did you learn any foreign language while you were over there? No, I never did. Never did. So you didn't have time. <laughs> well... Let me see now. You remember mm -hmm. that uh, entertainers from the United States? USO, Bob uh, Hope? Went over uh -huh. 
They were on our base. Bob Hope? I don't remember which one it was. Uh, the Swing uh, Benny? Those were killed, they were killed over there though. Benny, uh, oh come on, Benny. Uh, and then Goodman, they, Benny Goodman. They left our base on a plane mm -hmm. and got shot down in the southern France. Yeah, Benny Goodman. My goodness, well, that's really... <laughs> you have seen history. First oh, no, hand. Just... You really have. Well, Bill, these interviews are always hard to stop because they're mm. so interesting, but... Yep, time goes by. It yeah. surely does, but we thank you so much, first of all, for serving this country. I did want to ask you one other thing. Have you heard about the honor flight that goes to Washington, D.C.? Yes, they asked me about two weeks ago. Eh? They did ask you. Yeah. Are you interested in going? I don't know if I oh, have it goodness. or not. It's a free flight for you, Bill. Yeah, that's what it told me. Yeah. Who, who called you? Who contacted you? And he said they were they were planning them all the time. The VFW commander. The VFW, oh, the VFW commander. Bill, I was an escort on one of those a couple of years ago. It's an amazing experience. They treat you like kings. Everything paid for. The highways just split apart. The <laughs> bus goes through with a police escort. First class hotels, good food everywhere at the airports, people welcoming. It is a wonderful thing. Have you thought about it? Yeah, I thought about it. Oh. And I assume you're going to call her up. Whenever. I think that, do you know, would that be from Spokane or Portland? I think uh, Port Portland. Portland, yeah, because you're Oregon. Yes. I think they did last time anyway. Yes. Uh, the one, I went on the one, because I'm in Washington, so the one from Spokane goes twice a year, I think right now and October, and I don't know about the one from Portland, but at least two times a year, I think. You really, I, if you can at all go, I just mm -hmm. encourage you to go. Uh, have you ever seen the war memorials in Washington? No. I'll tell you, the World War II memorial is fantastic. It'll bring you to tears. <laughs> but it's wonderful. Okay, but anyway, thank you. Thank you, Bill, for mm -hmm. sharing your story today and opening up your home. We really appreciate it.